Home Guard Complexity Using Prologue. Uh, this episode is going to be kind of a potpourri. I mean, we're going to throw a whole bunch of stuff in here. We've got some administrative issues. Then I want to introduce one key concept, which will really set us up for two very uh, interesting lectures which are coming. So let's get right to it. Okay, first of all, uh, correction. Um, last homework assignment, I gave the wrong answer. Ma congratulations to uh, Max Kieskem2 for pointing out the solution that I gave in the slides was wrong. Then... In the comments, I gave another solution, which was also wrong. And congratulations to How to Fold Soup for being the first to find this and for correcting the correction. Uh, what you see in the bottom there, that is the smallest one which we've been able to come up with uh, collectively as to how to print out uh, um, the uh, sequence. So, yeah, I did a really sloppy job on the homeworks this time, guys. I, I apologize. So... Um, now, congratulations to W.K. Replin. We have yet another Macho Man. So W.K. Replin actually did all of the homework assignments in one night. He just sat down and powered through them. So <laughs> this just goes to show, guys, it's not too late. Anybody sitting on the sidelines, if you'd like to hop in here, um, come on in. The water's warm. I will accept the, any old homeworks. I will help you get up to speed. Um, let's hope that a lot of other people follow uh, W.K. Replin's example here. Um, so, yeah, this, the, the door is wide open to anybody who wants to participate. Okay, the concept that I want to introduce uh, for Prolog today is the concept of, of a list. Okay, up until now, we've only had one object as the value of a variable. Uh, what if we want to deal with more than one object at a time? So lists in Prolog are a way of grouping several objects together. All right, and lists have a very simple syntax. Okay, you just separate by comments, commas, what of whatever the objects are that you want to put in the list, and then enclose the whole thing in brackets. All right, so let's go over to the terminal, and I will demonstrate this. Okay, real quick, let me uh, do a genealogical database here again, since we've been using that one as an example. I just have a father who has three sons, and I'll give them really generic names so it's easy to keep track of them. Father is has a son one. Sun 2 and Sun 3, right? Go ahead and compile this. And uh, <clears throat> you already know that, uh, so this is like a translation of, of the question, who did father begat, right? Or who is this father's son? This is a translation of that question into prologue. And you already know that if you hit the uh, semicolon uh, after it displays the first instance here, it will go on to the next one, right? So this father has three different sons. Now this is what I'd like to call a, this is one way Prolog has of dealing with multiple objects, right? So you've dealt with all three of the sons here, but this is sort of a, what's called a temporal uh, way of handling them. In other words, x equals son one at one time, and then you kind of advance the clock by typing the semicolon, and that changes x1 to be son two, and then you type the semicolon, and that changes x1 to be sun 3, right? So you can deal with all three of these suns, but you can't deal with them all at the same time, okay? So I'm going to show you a way of doing that, and, and Prolog has a very interesting thing called find all, all right? Now here's how it works. Find all has three arguments. The first argument is a variable. The second argument is a query like what you'd put on the command line. Say we're doing begat here, right? Let me go ahead and copy this and paste it. All right? This is just the query that we had in the command line. So whatever query that you want, just get that one. And then the last one is what's going to be called a list. And you'll see what that is immediately. I'll call it X's, right? Because there's going to be multiple of the X's. Here it goes. Ha-ha! See, this This is how Prolog represents a list. It just has all three of the things, and then it puts brackets around them. It, it's very simple here. This is no no big brain stretch uh, that, 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 that's going on in this lesson. I'm just uh, kind of setting things up for the next time. Okay? So let's play around with these lists for a minute. I, I can make any kind of list that I want. Uh, a, B, C, like this. Right? That sets A equal to the list. So... Basically, you can, this is just a way of kind of grouping these guys together. You know, I can put arbitrary stuffs in here. I can mix letters and numbers. I can 
anything that you want, right? You can bag together. If you want to treat a whole bunch of things in one at one time, this is how you do it in Prolog. Okay? And what's more, uh, to to reiterate this find all thing, okay? Here's how it works. If you have a query like we get father son something like this, and uh, which you know temporally at different times gives you the answers that you want, right? You can turn that temporal sequence into a list by using find all. So here's how you do it. Find all. First argument is a variable, song. Second argument is a query that you want to turn from a temporal one into a list. All right. And the third one is holds the list. And there you go, son one, son two. Okay, now notice the naming convention here. We typically make this one a singular val a value because it's going to be filled with one of them at a time. And then we make this value a, uh, a plural value, right? So, at any rate, that's it. Uh, stay tuned until next time when we'll be talking about uh, three things which at the first glance don't seem like they go together at all but um, really have some really cool uh, connections. We'll be talking about parrots, we'll be talking about piraha, and we'll be talking about prologue. See you then.